This video focuses on player movement synchronization across clients in a multiplayer game. I was driven to make this because I felt using GameLift was very expensive compared to a homegrown solution using other AWS services. I'll be reviewing the key functionality in the AWS Lambda code and the Unity scripts that made this possible. The only Unity third-party library I used was Native WebSocket, link in the description. Please note that this is not a production-ready implementation, but it is a pet project that I wanted to share. Okay, let's start on the AWS side. This repository, Multiplayer Movement Sync AWS, has all the Lambda code required for the server side. I'm going to defer to my last video titled Unity Multiplayer Server with Amazon Web Services for how to set up API Gateway, Lambda, and DynamoDB. The only difference with this AWS project is the code inside the Lambda functions. All other setup and configuration is the same. So check out that tutorial for instructions on how to set that all up. The join game function is basically a lightweight matchmaking system that gets called when the WebSocket is first established. When a player requests to play a game from their Unity client, this is the first Lambda function that is hit. It inserts a row into the game session DynamoDB table with their unique connection ID, along with a generated match UUID, and then the word empty for player 2. When the second player eventually joins, it queries for the row where there's an empty for the player 2 spot then updates that column with their unique connection ID. Now that the game is full with two players, our Player2 Unity client sends a message to initiate the game. More on that later. It is extremely basic and there are probably some race conditions, but for this demo it does the job. When the Player2 client sends the message that the game is ready to start playing, it is now sent through the established WebSocket in the messaging lambda function. All messages are processed through this switch case statement. There is an opcode for each message or action, like when the game starts or an opponent velocity is received or a ball is thrown, etc. Since we received a request start opcode and we now have a full game with player 1 and 2, we send a message to both clients that the game is ready and has started. When you start moving around in the game, the Unity client starts spamming the Lambda function with opponent velocity messages. The velocity messages come into this case block. Each time we get a new message, Query for the DynamoDB row that was created when this match was made, and compare the incoming velocity's message connection ID with the player1 column. Okay, so what does that mean? So remember, we store the unique connection IDs for both player1 and player2. That's how we know who's sending the incoming messages to the server. You could probably just set the player1 and 2 in their respective clients on the game start, and just send that as part of the message and avoid this DynamoDB call, but this is a little bit more secure. Okay, so if player 1 sent their movement, we create a new message with that info and send it over to player 2's client, and vice versa for player 2. It's pretty straightforward. Whichever player sends their movement messages, we just send it to the opposite player. So those are the highlights for the Lambda functionality. Okay, so let's take a look on how it's done in Unity. When you open the game, the first thing that happens is it attempts to join a new game and establishes the WebSocket connection. The WebSocket service is where all that is handled. When the classes start method is called, we create the WebSocket lifecycle methods and then connect to the socket. Once the socket is established, it uses the lifecycle methods to handle all events coming from the server. Now that it's established, it hits the onOpen function, which immediately sends out a request to start game. If you are player 1, nothing happens until player 2 joins. If you are player 2, however, this message to the messaging lambda function is what kicks off the game. Now that all players have reported in to start, the Lambda function sends out the start playing opcode as mentioned earlier. All messages are processed through this process received message function. This playing message case is what initializes the game client for the new game. Notice this is just like the switch case statement in the messaging Lambda function, but on the client's receiving end. So there's an opcode for each action type. Now that your game started, we need to start sending out our movement messages. In the player movement controller script, keyboard inputs to move the player will actually add a force to their character. The same force vector will be sent as an opponent velocity message to the Lambda server. These messages are built with a custom player position message script I made, serialized as JSON, then sent over the socket. We also pass the actual local player's current position to allow for drift correction. On the receiving end of this message, the player 2 side, 
it comes into the opponent velocity case. I deserialize the message from JSON into the player position message object. We then pass the message to the enemy position handler. This class is just a middleman for enemy class initialization and queuing up player position messages. You can see here we add a message to an enemy position queue. This enemy class represents the physical enemy opponent you'll be facing off with. The enemy position queue is a list that buffers all of the incoming velocity messages. The fixed update method just loops through the buffer and applies the same force to the local enemy object. This mimics the exact movements that were applied to the other player's character in their Unity client, so you will see the same movements they are making in your game client. Well, sort of. You may notice a small drift of player location between player 1 and player 2 clients. It seems to be within one tenth of a meter but may grow over time, or if you run into something physical, like the ball or the other player. It is important to note that I only synchronize the character movements from the player's input. Meaning if you run into the other player, moving him across the screen, I'm not going to correct the other player's new location because you pushed him. So if he moves himself again, he'll snap back to where he should be on your screen. I'll save that functionality for another time. The drift correction I've implemented here is pretty basic. After the first couple messages come through, I start checking the previous message's position against the current location. If it's over the threshold, we kick off a coroutine to lerp the difference. So we're applying the same force to the enemy object, then when the next message comes in, we check to see if we even made it to the last location we were supposed to be at, before applying the next force. If not, we apply the drift correction. It's not perfect, but I think it works for this project. And the last thing, if you have a cap on speed for your player, make sure to apply those same checks on the receiving client's end. Otherwise, you may get some jerky movements instead of a smooth flow. So there's obviously a little more to this project than I covered, but these are the key takeaways to establish a WebSocket connection and synchronize opponent's movement. Let me know if you have any questions or comments, and if you'd like to chat more, please drop by my Discord server. Thanks for watching.